Good morning, this is Steve Hoffaker. Welcome to a, another one of our webinar programs. Uh, we provide these free of charge uh, to CAPS and related professionals uh, for continuing education. It's one hour of continuing education. If you can use that for your designation, certainly for CAPS and for any other program, uh, that's why we provide these. Uh, it is an approved uh, program with American Occupational Therapy Association. And um, I'm also the only uh, CAPS instructor to have APTA approval for the classes. Uh, not the specific one, but in general, so uh, you can check on that. Um, this is uh, Herman's uh, second, th what, third, fourth visit with us. Uh, we're well, glad to have you back again. Uh, just uh, for next month, or actually April 2nd, uh, Suzanne Soderberg is going to be doing a program on reverse mortgage called The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. We hear a lot about reverse mortgage. Not a lot is known about it unless you've actually gone and sat with a lender and applied for it. So we're going to kind of pull the screen back on that a little bit and see what it might be as a uh, financing tool for some of our clients. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, turn this back to Herman uh, with... Uh, Procare Ropox, and Herman, it's all yours. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, as I had mentioned to a lot of you earlier, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be here this afternoon. Um, I am a member of the CAPS program. I've known Steve for several years, and I think he does an outstanding job. I think the program is just phenomenal. I get a lot of it, a lot out of uh, the, the program that Steve offers and some of the speakers that he has uh, in terms of um, personally and also professionally when I'm out meeting with people and trying to deal with some of these issues that have to deal with uh, aging and uh, trying to keep people safe and trying to keep people independent so that they can live the lives that they want to lead. Uh, so what I have done for today is I've put together a presentation that will focus a lot on falls and falls prevention and uh, just to give everyone an idea as to how serious the problem is so that when we're out meeting with people, meeting with clients, meeting with customers, we have a, a better grasp of it. And then also later on, um, looking at some of the solutions that are out there and that are available to help. Uh, to better help us so we can help our customers and our clients so that uh, they can go on and, and lead um, an independent and a safe life, especially when we're looking at uh, restroom use. So with that, I will go ahead and begin. Uh, you see here uh, with this first slide, um, uh, I work for a company called ProCare Innovations and we are responsible for Ropox, and we'll go, we'll go into a, uh, in a little bit greater detail what Ropox is and what they're all about. Uh, but for starters, um, just know that they are a Danish company, and they're a Danish company that is really committed to making sure that everyone can use a, rest, uh, a restroom safely and independently, regardless as to what their mobility level is. And... Earlier today, I was talking uh, with Steve and um, we were mentioning that a lot of what we're seeing now, especially with uh, mobility tools, mobility devices, the um, uh, companies that are willing to work with hospitals, assisted living facilities, and uh, even um, individual homes to keep people so that they can be independent living at home so that um, they're less likely to fall when using the shower or using the restroom. A lot of those companies are originating in Scandinavia. And uh, Scandinavia would be the countries of uh, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, um, and then also, while technically not Scandinavia, the Netherlands, which I also represent, Lopetal, which is uh, out of the Netherlands. And so a lot of what you're seeing in this industry is coming from that area of the world. And a lot of it, in my opinion, is just because uh, you're seeing um, they are really, really innovative when it comes to their health care, when it comes to life expectancy rates, health care, infant mortality. They are among the world leaders. And I think now what they're looking to do is uh, kind of share that and uh, you know, feed that out to the rest of the world. And so that's really kind of what uh, 
kind of what with what's going on from a nationwide standard standard and from an industry standard. So you're going to see more of this coming in the near future. And a lot of it is going to be based from those countries. So uh, as you can see here on the slide, when we uh, look at one of the many reasons why falls and fall prevention is so important is because the United States is an aging popula is uh, represents an aging population demographic. And I, I, I call this a Google moment because we all have access to the internet. And so you can Google at any point the, you know, the aging of the United States, where the demographics are going. And, and so just know it's important, as you can see up here, 10,000 people turn age, six, age 65 every single day in the United States. So as we prepare um, uh, in, in terms of how better to, uh, to to service this clientele, service these people who may be our customers. Uh, it, it's something that we need to be aware of that here as we approach 2030, you know, they're gonna be 71 million people that are a part of this demographic. And so um, understanding the industry, understanding the tools that are available to help this demographic, it, it's something that's important to all of us. So why all of this matters? Um, as you can see here, when, you, when we're talking about falls, we need to understand that falls are very serious. Um, and just so you know, you can see here, all of this information is sourced by the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control. They, um, in my opinion, it is an excellent source of information, source of material. Uh, I use the CDC quite often uh, when I need to cite statistics, when I need to present. Uh, if you go to the CDC, they have a wide variety of studies and uh, organizations that can really help you to get gain an understanding as to uh, whether it's falls or or any particular topic um, in in regards to uh, in in regards to the spectrum uh, to help you out so that again you're better able to help uh, help clientele when you're out working in the field. And so, just some things here to to highlight. Um, one out of five falls causes a serious injury, uh, such as broken bones or a head injury. Um, and each year, three million older people are treated in emergency departments for fall injuries. And those are things that you need to think about if you're working with a client. And a lot of times you have um, clients nowadays that want to build forever homes. And maybe they're in their 50s and they're in their 60s and they want to be in their homes as often as possible. And so when you're meeting with them and you're designing kitchens, you're designing bed bedrooms, you're designing bathrooms, understanding that as they age, they do increasingly become a fall risk. This is very important. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I wanna highlight here is this box down here where 95% um, of all hip fractures are actually called by, are actually caused by falling, 95%. And especially as you age, um, hip fractures are very serious. And um, uh, in addition, not shown here, uh, hip fractures are also more likely to occur in women when women fall. And, and so when again, so as, as we go through this presentation and we think about this and we think about ways that we can help to prevent falls, just know that this is a serious issue and it can lead to very serious injuries. Uh, and then down here, uh, something we'll touch on later. It's also very costly, uh, very costly for the uh, the person who falls, as well as costly for the industry um, as a as a general matter. I use this slide. I call this slide "All of Us," and I think it's important because uh, here we have uh, the United States of America, and I. I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir when, you know, a lot of times people think that we live in a divided country and you've got this over here and this group over here and all of that. But uh, one thing that is uh, pretty much uniform is that falls are everywhere. No one is immune. The rich fall north, south, east, west falls occur to all of us, especially as we age. And so as you can see on this slide here, uh, this looks at from a state by state basis, um, adults age 65 and older who fall in the fall percentages on a per capita basis within this group. And the bottom line is just know that 
Um, and no matter where, you fr where you're from or what your demographic profile is, falls are an issue. And, uh, and so I, I really like that, um, like that graph. And if you go to the CDC website, um, you can actually click on an individual state and it will give you the individual fall statistics and the number of falls that are reported for that individual state. It, it's really a wonderful resource and it just highlights how serious of an issue this is. When we talk about money, um, let's see if I can move. If I can get rid of that. Okay, that's good. Uh, one of the most important things to know is that falls cost a lot of money. And as, as we'll see as we move along, uh, falls not only cost the, the person that's falling money, as well as the injury that they have to recover for, if they recover, but also from an industry standard, when we're dealing with hospitals, assisted living facilities, they one of the reasons why they have fall prevention programs in place at hospitals and assisted living facilities and nursing centers is because when patients and or residents fall in these facilities, it costs them a lot of money. And here again, you can see this is a nationwide prob uh, problem and you can see by state exactly how much money falls uh, cost uh, each state annually. Again, it's really, it's a wonderful, wonderful resource tool. And the bottom line to remember here is that uh, fall, falls cost everyone a lot of money. And it's always something to keep in the back of your mind when you're working with um, individual um, customers on new home uh, designs, or if you're, let's say you're an architect and you're working with uh, designing a hospital or designing an assisted living facility. So um, why this is important, um, ho all hospitals have fall prevention programs. All hospitals have fall prevention programs. Hospitals have fall prevention programs because number one, they care about their patients and they want to make sure that their, their patients are, are getting better in their hospitals and, and that they're not getting worse and also because hospitals have a very strong incentive to make sure that when, uh, that when patients are there, patients are getting better and they're not getting worse. Um, and it's important to know, especially if you're working um, with on a, on a hospital project or even if you're working on an assisted living project, it's important to know how your client gets paid and how they make their money. And so if I were to use just as a generic example for a hospital, let's say, if you have a, let's say you have a person who is 70 years old and they fall and they break their arm. And so they get admitted to the hospital and Medicare is going to pay for their care. When they get to the hospital, first, when they get to the hospital, all patients are given a mobility assessment. So they know exactly what the mobility level is of the person that they're admitting so that they can set up a program within the hospital so that that person has a mobility program. So to try to prevent them from falling and to help to get them from place to place. So that, that patient then goes into the hospital and they have the hospital and they're, they're in the hospital with a broken arm. Then while they're there in the middle of the night, they get up to go and use the restroom and then they fall and they break their hip. Under Medicare reimbursement guidelines, and it gets it, it you can really get into the weeds on this and it, it, it gets very complicated. But basically, as an overview, Medicare will not pay for that broken hip because the fall occurred in the hospital, which means the hospital is now on the hook for that for that injured hip and the recovery of that injured hip in addition to the injured arm that Medicare is paying for. And so this is one of the reasons why hos all hospitals have fall prevention programs because hospitals don't like to, lo to, uh, to lose money. And this is one way that they can lose money. So not only then is the hospital on the hook for that patient's care because it occurred as a result of a fall, but then you get into things where like that, that patient is now taking up uh, bed space, 
Um, it's taking up additional nurses, and it's just an, an added cost to the hospital that the hospital prefers not to make. This is one of the driving forces as to why hospitals have fall prevention programs. The second reason is when it comes to injuries, one of the underrated aspect of this is that within a hospital environment, when you're talking about patient mobility and transferring patients, whether it's from a bedroom to a, a bedside commode, or it's from a, a bed to a bathroom or to a shower area, you also have nurse injuries. I um, mean, you have PT injuries, you have OT injuries for people that have to handle uh, handle these patients to make sure that they get from uh, place A to place B in a timely manner. And this is an example that I use a lot, but imagine if you are and if you're a construction worker and you see a pallet of widgets that weigh, let's say uh, 400 pounds, no construction worker in America is required to move uh, a pallet of widgets by themselves that weigh 400 pounds without the aid of a tool or, or some sort of assistance to make sure they can do it properly without injuring themselves. But then you go to a hospital and you have a patient that weighs 400 pounds and you have a five foot four, 120 pound nurse that's supposed to properly and safely move this patient from station to station to make sure that that patient is cared for. It is a disaster in hospitals, and it leads to patient injuries, and it leads to the it leads to injuries of nurses. Uh, the nurses' union even has a, a statement where they say that basically nurses should not be lifting any more than thirty five pounds. And you can imagine when you talk about the different size, and uh, you know from uh, the uh, bariatric population on down how difficult that can be when you have to move a, a, a patient that might be six foot four and 300 pounds or whatever the situation might be. Add to that a lot of times this uh, patient, you know, if you drop a pallet of widgets, that's one thing. If you drop a patient, that's something else. Then it becomes a, then it becomes a, re a really, really dreadful situation. So because of that, when you're dealing with assisted living facilities or you're dealing with ho uh, hospitals and you're designing restrooms, uh, new construction projects, just have that in mind that, that these fall prevention programs are very, very important to them. And so if you can provide uh, some uh, knowledge in this field, or if you can provide some details or some design elements that can help them with this, it can be very, very beneficial to your clients. So uh, some of the things we've already kind of touched on, um, healthcare-based outcome, uh, outcomes, just know that within the healthcare industry, there is an outcome when it comes to patient mobility, uh, patient movement, patient transfer, to find methods that, uh, that can do this as safely and as competently as possible for both the caregiver and the care receiver. So, um, where, do, where does Ropox as well as other companies come in with that? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I work for uh, ProCare and we represent Ropox in the United States. Uh, Ropox is one of those uh, Danish companies founded in 1962. It is uh, represented in 27 countries around the world. And if you ever have the privilege to travel to Europe and travel into um, the, the Scandinavian countries, you will see some of the elements that we are talking about here with the idea of uh, number one, preventing falls, and then number two, promoting independence so that people can use the, can, people can use the restroom independently. So uh, when we're talking about the bathroom, um, I have here uh, disability-friendly bathrooms that make life uh, make everyday life easier. When we're looking at where falls are most likely to occur, if you're talking about a hospital or an assisted living facility, falls occur in the restroom, period. If you're talking about an individual home, falls occur first, number one, on the stairs, going up and down stairs. Number two, falls occur in the restroom. When within the restroom, when we talk about where falls are most likely to occur, for a long time, it was widely believed that falls occur most often in the shower area. And when you look at 
um, numbers and you look at data and studies on that, there are still there are a lot of a lot of studies that still believe it, that that's where falls are most likely to occur. However, there's now a lot of new data that shows that falls are actually most likely to occur in and around the toilet, getting up and using the toilet. In fact, the National Institute of Health just recently came out with some new studies and, and some new articles, and they now say that falls are most likely to occur in and, in and, around, the, in and around the commode area. So um, when we're looking at the bathroom and we're looking at products that can help, uh, number one, um, keep people independent when they're using the restroom, as well as keep things safe and um, help within an, an overall scope of fall prevention. The industry is rapidly moving into the uh, realm of what are called height adjustable uh, kitchens or a height adjustable, excuse me, height adjustable uh, sinks. And so there are a lot of different height adjustable sinks on the market. Uh, these are just three examples, and I highlight these three because they have a tendency to be very popular. Uh, you have a swing line version, which is here, and this works really well, especially in a private residence. Um, if you if you look over here, you can see in this picture you have a um, you have a wall mounted sink, and what happens here is that, and we have a video later on that uh, will show this in greater detail. A person can sit on the commode. They can actually bring the sink over and then they can wash their hands. Um, they can make sure that they're, they're performing proper hygiene and they can do so all in one sitting, all in one area. It is a wonderful design that works really, really well, especially if you are designing a home for, um, for a person that maybe a person is in a wheelchair or you have uh, an, aging, an aging person that's building a forever home. Having this swing line design here, um, that it just makes it so much easier uh, to use. It's a, it's a space saver. It really does just a, a wonderful, wonderful job. And we can show this here, if I can get this to play, and you can kind of see this in greater examples. Um, and like I said, especially if you're designing a private home, this works Moreover, wonderfully. The products are characterized by their space optimization and by using technology in a way and you can see how nice and easy it works their independence. And here we have our user you see how it folds out chosen the swing wash basin due to space saving and because it offers walking impaired and wheelchair users and users right there you can see you can see how it works so, there where um, the person is on the commode, they just pull it out, the working environment for the and caregivers is better due to the reduction of lifts. It the works user wonderfully can well. The toilet and wash hands without moving before transferring back to the wheelchair. And as you can see there, that's an important point. It means that a person only has to do one transfer. When it comes to self-sufficiency, they can robot. pause it here. They can use the restroom and they can wash their hands and they only have to do one transfer. So it makes it easier, it's a lot safer, and it, it's a design that I, I, I personally love, works really well. The second um, option here that, that are available is the standard line. And there are a lot of companies that will offer height adjustable sinks, um, again, especially um, in, in the Scandinavian area. One element that makes this sink um, different from other sinks that are available on the market is not only is this sink height adjustable, meaning that if you're in a wheelchair, you can wheel yourself up and use the sink, sink safely and without, um, without any assistance. But when you're designing a new area, this height adjustable sink will allow you to use your own wash basin. So what you can do is you can actually, if you want to put in a height adjustable sink, you can, if you see where my cursor is, you can essentially just buy this white box, put it, uh, put it up against the wall. And then when it comes to the faucet and when it comes to the sink, you can choose, you or the client can choose what type of sink they want to use. The color, the style, how they want it to work and operate. It works wonderfully well because 
Uh, one thing that we're seeing within the industry, whether you're looking at a, a public facility or if you're looking at a private home, is that no one wants a public restroom to look like a public restroom. And you don't want your restroom to look like clinical. You want it to look nice. You want it to look stylish. And this is a really nice, innovative idea because the person can pick their own wash basin. They pick their own sink. They pick, they, they pick their own faucet. And so you can create beautiful designs while at the same time, you still have a sink that is height adjustable, meaning a, stand, a standing user can use the sink and a seated user can use the sink. It is just um, absolutely wonderful. And you can see here, I'm going to play this. Uh, and this is just a, a generic uh, example that was uh, actually filmed at the Ropox headquarters outside of Copenhagen in Denmark. And you can see just how easy it is to raise and lower the sink. Now they chose white here because just for clinical purposes, but imagine being able to design a private home or a, uh, an assisted living facility, but you can tell your client, hey, you can pick what color wash basin you want. And, and then going forward, whether the person is in a wheelchair or if a person is standing, if you have a lot of times you may have you may have users where their mobility level changes throughout the day. They may be a standing user when they wake up in the morning and then towards evening as, as they tire, they may become a wheelchair user. And this sink, you're able to adjust it for them no matter what uh, no matter what mobility situation they happen to be in. This this next line, um, I like to highlight this because it. It helps with one problem that is common when you're putting in um, height adjustable sinks, and that is the mirror. In the past, a lot of times when you install height adjustable sinks, there can be a gap when as the sink is raised and lowered as to where the mirror is. And sometimes for a person, especially a person in a wheelchair that wants to use the sink independently, if they lower the sink, they may not find themselves properly squared up to the mirror. And this design works really well because it's all one unit where you have the sink and the mirror and it works together. And here's an example of this. And it works really well because now everything moves as one unit. And so if you think if you have a situation where you may have a spouse, where you may have a standing spouse, and, uh, and the second spouse might be in a, wheel, in a wheelchair, this feature works wonderfully well. Um, a children's hospital where you may have five, six, seven-year-olds who may be of one height versus people who are 15, 16 who may be of a, uh, may be of a, dis a different height. It's just another option to know that, is, that that is available and it's something to consider when you're working with, uh, when you're working with clients. Now, um, this has almost become my pet peeve. I personally, I am a very big believer of support arms, especially when it comes to fall prevention. If you want to, if you are designing a home for someone and you want them to be able to use the restroom safely and you want them, you want to keep them independent when using a restroom, the key is the support arm. And this is true whether you're talking about a private home situation or you're talking about a hospital, public facility, assisted living, whatever you happen to be working with. In addition to that, when you're dealing with support arms, in my opinion, and this is the direction that the market is going, support arms should be height adjustable, which means your support arms, a person should be able to go in and easily adjust the support arm so that the support arm can fit that individual user. And it, if you think about it, it just doesn't make any sense that whether you have a person who is, let's say you have a person who is six foot five and 300 pounds, and then you have another user who is five foot one and 120 pounds, the idea that they are supposed to use the exact same support arm in the exact same location is crazy. And I have been privileged enough to have worked in this field for a long time where 
I've gone in and I've even trained nurses on fall prevention and safe patient handling, uh, especially working in the VAs and here at, um, I'm based in Indiana with the Indiana University Hospital System. I actually think there's a lot of evidence that more falls actually are created by people that go ahead and use a support arm, but, but the support arm is not at the proper height and they end up either tumbling over and falling or if the support arm is too tall, they actually end up with a shoulder injury because they can't use the support arm properly. So these support arms that, we, that we're showing here, they are height adjustable. So they can be easily manipulated so that each individual user gets a customized fit to their mobility level. And then there's some other, um, in this example here with the Ropox one, there are some other examples here, which you have um, uh, more of an elevated uh, support arm uh, here at the end, which can help a person uh, maintain their balance and their stability when they're getting on and off the commode. And then you even have, um, I'm a bit older, so I call it kind of like an old Atari joystick kind of uh, control there, which can also help with, um, uh, with mobility, especially when you're transferring on and off of the commode. So uh, we mentioned earlier when we're dealing with fall prevention that falls are most likely to occur in and around the commode. Getting up, going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, that's when falls happen. And I have found it uh, interesting a lot of times that especially for people in a wheelchair, and want to be independent when they're using the restroom, a lot of times people don't understand how that process actually goes, how that process works. So I have two examples on this screen and these pictures come to us from the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, and then also from the Department of Georgia, just to source the pictures. And you see here, we have our standard ADA design where we have our commode, um, 18 inches off of the, what I call the short side wall. Um, and to be ADA compliant, you have your, uh, your commode here, you measure down the center of the circle, and then you make sure your, this has to be 16 to 18 inches off of the wall. Then you have your, your back uh, grab bar here, which is 36 inches long. And then go back here on the short side wall, you have your second grab bar here, which is 42 inches uh, long. It has to be off the wall one foot, ending here at 54 inches. So for a person that wants to remain independent when they're in a wheelchair and they need to use a public restroom, there are two ways they can do it. First, up here, this is called an oblique transfer. And what happens is the person comes in with the wheelchair. The wheelchair is... Um, stationed here, kind of at an oblique angle. And then the user will grab onto this back grab bar, drag themselves from the wheelchair to the commode. Then they will straighten themselves off here using this, um, this other grab bar on the short side wall. And then when they're done, they'll do the same thing in reverse. The second way that they can do this is, this is called a lateral transfer. And in this example, the, you have the, uh, uh, the wheelchair user is set up laterally to the commode. They grab onto the commode. They slide themselves off, off from the wheelchair to the commode. And then they grab this grab bar here to straighten themselves up. And then they do the process again uh, when they're finished. Now, everyone here has been in a public restroom. I'm not saying anything out of turn to say that this is not very hygienic. Uh, quite frankly, it's terrible. But this is the best or the minimum requirement that a, a, a facility has to do to meet ADA standards uh, for wheelchair use so that a person in a wheelchair can use the restroom independently. And you think of the number of people across this country that are in wheelchairs and every single time you see a person that's in a wheelchair, if they're out in a public venue, whether it's in a museum or an amusement park or whatever it might be, and they want to use the, the, the restroom independ independently, they are doing one of these three, one of these two methods. And I frankly think we can do better. 
The other part that I want to uh, show you is this angle here in particular. Uh, imagine you have a 70-year-old a man or a 75-year-old man who wants to remain independent when using the restroom. And you can see as he's grabbing this back grab bar, could you see going from this picture to this picture, how that could potentially be a fall risk and how that could that could potentially be something that where he could injure himself. That is the problem with the ADA. And that is why as more and more data comes in, why actual falls occur more often using the commode than any other place, whether you're in a private, uh, private home or in a public facility. Because if you think about it, this is the place where people most want their privacy, where they're least likely to ask for help and this is what we are requiring them to do. And, uh, and so, and remember just this, uh, th this is an, an ADA standard restroom. So this is a, a restroom that meets ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act requirement. And as you can see, um, it's just not good enough. So what we have here that I wanna show is when you have support arms in place, it makes those transfers a lot easier. And what's really good about these support arms is, there we go. What makes these support, stop it. Oh, well, music won't stop. So what makes these support arms so, so wonderful is that, let's see if I can move this along here. Let's see what she uses, there we go. Is that, as you can see here, you can see how she's able to use that elevated feature so, so that she can safely use the, uh, use the commode. And then here, they come in a wide variety of models and styles, but the support arm raises and lowers. And then as you can see, as she can get up, you can see how she's using that elevated feature to help her get up. It just works a lot easier and it's a lot safer than just using a standard ADA configuration. Um, again, here, if you notice in this example, this example actually shows, shows this feature a little bit better where you have the support arms. The support arms are height adjustable. You see how easy it is to move up and down. And now she's going to go ahead and sit down. And now when she's ready to, to get up off of the commode, you can see how she can use that elevated feature to safely get herself into an upright position. Now, I, I use these two examples because when we're talking about support arms for people in uh, using a commode, it's not just wheelchair people that benefit. A lot of times there are standing users that also need these support arms in order to be independent when using the restroom. So whether you're doing a transfer, because here, instead of grabbing a, a back grab bar or something, they can instead grab that support arm, which is FDA indicated to help with the transfer. It makes transferring a lot easier uh, for both the seated user as well as the standard standing user. And these are innovations that you can put certainly in a private home with little difficulty. And even in a public home, you can put these in um, and still be ADA compliant. And then it's a win-win. Um, you get less falls. Uh, the, the user is more likely to be independent. And again, it's just a win-win across the board. Uh, and then again, um, showering, which is another area where you can get uh, falls and injuries, having that height adjustable feature uh, with the support arms, again, is just very, very helpful to keep people independent when they're using the restroom, as well as to prevent falls in a showering environment. The next thing that I kind of want to touch on is that in terms of where the industry is going is that in addition to bathroom use, um, you're also going to increasingly see um, high low or height adjustable products in the kitchen area. And that is because especially in a private home environment, you're going to have people that are in a wheelchair 
but want to remain fully independent when using all aspects of their, of their house, which just makes sense. And so here with these, I'm gonna play this video real quick. With these height adjustable countertops, this system works really well because it allows the user to pick their own countertop. So the, the user can pick their own countertop, uh, they can pick their own style, their own color, but it creates something that is height adjustable so that whether you have children, whether you have a person in a wheelchair, or you have a standing user, they can all use the kitchen properly. Uh, as you can see in this example, even a stove, the stove becomes height adjustable. So someone who is in a wheelchair can cook properly. The sink is height adjustable and it just better allows them to use all aspects of the kitchen. Very, very easy. And again, from a style perspective, from a style perspective, What's really great about this is that the user picks their own cabinet and it works wonderful, or their, their own countertop rather. So it works wonderfully well. And so here we have some examples. Here you have the, the countertop in place, uh, which is height adjustable. And then also the cabinet here, the cabinet is height adjustable as well. And like with the other products, um, these come in a lot of different designs, a lot of different features. It just depends on what the you know what the what the customer wants to do. Um, as you can see in this video here, um, here we have a a, a cooking situation where so a person in a wheelchair is coming in. You can see she was able to lower her stove. Here she is here lowering her sink uh, so that she can use it. And what's really nice about this is that I, I like to say is that you're not building or creating a handicapped restroom or handicapped uh, kitchen, you're building and creating a kitchen that everyone can use no matter what their mobility level is. And here she is lowering the, uh, the kitchen cabinet. And this has application beyond just someone who is in a wheelchair. You can imagine someone who is elderly but wants to live in their own home, but maybe doesn't want to reach up to the top shelf to grab uh, you know, dishes or something like that. This is something that can work for them. And again, the design pieces are absolutely beautiful. And this is something that can work for a standing user as well as a seated user. And so we talk about the, the different styles that are available. Um, all of the companies that, are, that offer this, they are all going to offer a manual version. And in this version here. This is a manual, um, which is a cheaper alternative, which, which, uh, which will allow the countertop to be moved up and down, of course, manually. And what works really well about this system is that you may have a, a client that it wants to lower the sink and then they want to leave it at a particular height. They're not gonna be moving it on a day in and day out basis. Something like this can be wonderful for them. Uh, let's say if you have an assisted living facility and you have a, um, a, a resident who's going to be living there, maybe they're in a wheelchair. And so the, uh, the staff can go in, they can lower the, um, lower the sink or lower the countertop to a height that's suitable for them. And then when that person leaves and another person is now occupying this dwelling, maybe they're now a stand of uh, a uh, a standing user. And so you can just go in and simply move the, um, uh, move the countertop up to a height that's suitable for them. It just gives, it gives a facility or a private home so much flexibility and it's a win-win for, for everyone. And just to be clear, this uh, crank, this crank comes out when not in use. So you would plug that crank in and then you would raise and lower the sink and then you would, and then the crank would come out um, when you're done raising and lowering uh, the sink, uh, uh, the countertop rather. Uh, this here is just um, another look at the height adjustable uh, countertop. Uh, you can see here um, plumbing, electrical wires, everything is completely out of the way. It gives a nice, clean, beautiful look. And again, and with these design features, the customer is picking the countertop they're picking the color, they're picking the style, 
So there's no set that you're not losing out on anything in terms of your design elements. You're just creating a, um, a kitchen environment that everyone can use. Uh, here in this example, uh, this just looks at the, the, the cabinet. Uh, what's important about the cabinet feature is that these cabinet, uh, the cabinet height adjustable feature, the cabinet does not come straight down. It actually comes down at an angle so that you can actually reach into the back of the cabinet if necessary. So um, moving on, if, if any of this rings a bell that we've, I've had the honor of uh, uh, demonstrating and showing you guys here today, um, just know that Ropox and ProCare, ProCare uh, Medical, we are ready and willing to work with you. We have an entire team that can uh, design. We have Revit files. We have, um, uh, we have a whole design team. And so we can actually build out uh, restrooms for you that you can then take to clients and show them. We can make sure that they are, that they are ADA compliant if you're working in a public uh, venue, if you're working in a private venue. Um, I, I've actually literally even written books on spacing, on how much spacing a person would need if they want to remain independent, if they're using uh, uh, if they're in a wheelchair and they want to use the restroom or the shower area, or if they're a fall risk. And so just know that we are uh, ready, willing, and able to help. Um, and, and so that's just one of the things that, that we offer and we can get, get you back drawings and imaging uh, that is fully ADA compliant. Um, and so just know that we're here to help, um, help you so that you can help your clients or your customers any way that you can, any way that, uh, that we can together. And so uh, again, uh, lastly, um, uh, we have a saying, better ways to better days, um, which is here at ProCare, we would like to be your first choice when you're thinking about um, restroom or kitchen products and uh, you want something that is ADA compliant, but also truly accessible to everyone regardless of mobility level if you're working with a hospital or an assisted living facility um, and you know that they have a fall prevention program and you want to pre present options to them that can help them meet their goals of um, you know patient satisfaction and creating good efficacy results when they have patients or residents at their facility. And with that, I thank you all very much. I um, got it all in in about 50 minutes, which is nice. And so uh, what I would like to do if I, if I could is just um, open that up to any question, open it up to any questions or comments uh, that the audience might have. Yeah, go ahead. Anyone can have with a question for Herman, please. What's the uh, average cost for one of these mobility units for the bathroom transfers, um, particularly the shower one, what is the average cost for those in a home setting, not public? Uh, let me go back, like a, a shower, shower area like this. Uh, prob I would, okay, let me get out, let me get the preamble out of the way, case by case basis, Got it. <laughs> a million different styles. Okay, now I don't have to say that anymore. <laughs> uh, anywhere from 800 to 2000, depending on what you want to do. And so if you are, if you are designing a, um, let's say like a, 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 a restroom, like, let's say like a private home and, uh, and this is going to be their forever home and they, or the, or you have a situation where, um, a married couple uh, maybe there was a car accident or something and you have a standing user and a seated user. It's really a really, it's not a big investment to make it so that both the standing user and the seated user can both use the shower area competently and effectively. Uh, for time purposes, because uh, I, was, uh, I was trying to cram in a lot of information here, but Within the shower area, you can see that the shower chair folds up. So it's also a space saver. Both the support arms and the shower chair fold up. 
So if you're designing, let's say you're designing a, a private a private residence where space might be an issue, I can work. I can help you to work with that client so that um, with this system here, it folds up so that uh, a standing user can use the shower, and then next a seated user can use the shower. Um, also within that, uh, especially depending on the demographic that you're that you're working with you may have a lot of standing users that would still rather be seated when using a shower. And this is a wonderful option for them that again, isn't that expensive, can be installed easily and can really meet the needs of the potential user. And is this, Herman, is this height adjustable? Is that what this is? This is 100% height adjustable. And that height adjustability is important because um, First of all, if you have a person that's in a wheelchair and they're transferring, um, it's all you have wheelchairs that come in a lot in a wide variety of styles, and you have bariatric wheelchairs, wheelchairs for children, motorized, a whole whole there's a, a whole bunch of different wheelchairs. Having that height adjustable feature, meaning that you can adjust the uh, the, the the seat height to a height that makes it easier to transfer, is a big deal. Okay. It, it, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say yeah, and then in addition to that, when you have that height adjustable feature, uh, you want to make sure that a person is comfortable in the chair, that they're able to, that they're seated properly, and so that adjustable feature means if you have someone who is six four, and then another user that's five two or five three, they can easily adjust the chair to a suitable and safe height for them. Yeah, we had a question, uh, Pat, when you said commercially available, do you mean for businesses or to purchase on the open market? Um, both. No, we had a question for Pat was asking a question. Uh, uh, ab absolutely. Um, we, we work a lot with uh, businesses like um, hospitals, assisted living facilities. Um, but of course, if there are private homes, this is um, this works wonderful in a private home. In fact, um, I highlighted the swing sink that swings over to the commode. Mm -hmm. That That is textbook for a private residence. That so is your contact information on here where people can reach you to uh, be able to purchase these items? Um, I do not, but I can, I can add it to like when I, when I send it to you, I can add the, uh, the contact information. Okay. All right. And, uh, yeah. And um, it's uh, this. And uh, uh, somebody asked also about a catalog. Catalog. I can, if they're interested, I can put something together and send it to them. If, uh, if it would be okay to have their email if address. You send it to me, I'll post it to, to the group. Sure. Okay. I can do that. Or I tell you, you can just go on to, because uh, Hugh had asked a question earlier, and for, for the good of the group, uh, the aging and accessibility LinkedIn group that I have. I have one on Facebook, but it's been inactive. I didn't see the traffic there. Doesn't mean it's, it's dead forever, but the LinkedIn aging and accessibility group, which you are free to join, uh, you can post things like that. You can post your catalog out there. Uh, you can post uh, pictures. You can. Uh, I will post this presentation. So on LinkedIn plus the group. So that take advantage of that. Fantastic. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, does this require very specific um, contractor licensing and training and such? to have the reconstruction and the applications uh, uh, put into homes and commercial settings? No, uh, it's designed to be very, very easy to install. Um, basically, um, I've just used this as an example. You're just looking for the stud in the wall. Uh, and then once you have the stud in the wall, you just hook it right in and then it works fine. Uh, and one of, one of the things that, that I like to stress with this is that for everything that it does, and as user friendly as it is, it's really not that difficult to install. It, it, I mean, it's it's really it's it, it's so not a this, big deal. Yeah. It, could this be somewhat of a if somebody is uh, pretty handy, could they actually do a DIY? Um, yeah, actually, they they could, and I I say that only because I have been privileged enough to. Um, to have been uh, to have used these types of products on an install, and um, now they would be they would have to you know you do have to go in and find the stud you mm -hmm. know 
wall. But once you find the stud within the wall, it, it's just, you know, your anchor hooks, you're putting it, you're putting in the, you know, the anchor hooks and then putting it into place. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's absolutely possible to, to do that. Now that, so would, that would, oh, I'm sorry. That would be a little different than for the remote operating in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, yeah, actually it's good. I was going to transition to the kitchen. Okay. The, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the kitchen would probably, uh, uh, you, you would need, I would recommend a professional installer for the kitchen stuff. And that is because with the kitchen, you have to work closely with the person that's doing the countertop. And so there, there's almost like a two person operation where you have the countertop and then the countertop because the countertop has to, what they are is they're brackets that come out from the wall mm -hmm. and the countertop puts, uh, and then the countertop sits on top of the brackets to have the, uh, the, the height adjustable feature. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend whoever is doing the cabinet or the countertop install, I would recommend them for the, uh, for the countertop for, for this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's possible for the uh, support arm. They could put that in themselves. The other thing I would mention with the countertop, one nice thing that they did is that um, most of the countertops and the cabinets that, well, all the cabinets that we do, they're motorized and uh, it is not hardwired. So oh. all you need to do, yes. So, and that's because they wanted to make it as easy as possible. So okay. all you have to do is find the electrical outlet and then you plug, and so literally you just plug it into the wall and then you're good to go. Um, this is being recorded, so I'm don't quote me directly, but I believe it's 120 volts standard operating. You plug it into the wall and you're good to go. Wow. And yeah. So, I mean, so they, they, all of the design elements are done in mind to make it as easy as possible. And so what I, when we do uh, like for, for kitchen cabinets, what I like to do if possible is you can send the drawings for me, uh, to me. I can identify, okay, where the electrical outlet is just to make sure that we're, hi we're hiding the mm -hmm. wire that goes in. Mm -hmm. And then we can design and make sure the brackets are all in place, especially if they want, uh, if they're adding a stove or if they're adding a, uh, a sink. And we can go in and do all the specs and stuff so that when you get it back from us, it is set and good to go. And there are plans there that the... Um, uh, the the cabinet or the countertop installer understands, and so they it's really a nice smooth process. But that's fabulous. Like, that is, but that, that's a really a key element that you don't wow. need because uh, I I've actually been on projects that have been delayed for a long time because we needed a certified electrician to come in and do things. So everyone's mm -hmm. waiting. Mm -hmm. so this, mm -hmm. Just plug it in the wall and you're good. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Her Herman, quick question. Uh, Hugh Bailey here. I'm in Florida. Is it possible to actually see some of these products somewhere in Florida? Yeah, I, I would have to check. But um, if it's possible to get your contact info, I can look around and see. Um, we may have some, distrib some distributors down there that I can okay. do. Um, and then, um, of course, you know, depending upon if you have some projects or anything, uh, that you're interested in, I can always, you know, I have a, a, a sample case. I, I know, and I, I travel a lot, you know, I'm heading out to California next week and the next month and a half, I'm going to be in Los Angeles, um, San Diego, New Orleans, Atlanta. Uh, and so, so we can make sure you're taking care of, I can send you sample pieces and stuff. I, we have a showroom in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and if you're interested or if you have clients that are interested, you know, we could even maybe work out something where they could come okay. in and see for themselves. Because I, I think, you know, we're showing videos and pictures here, but when you see this stuff in person and you see how it works, yeah. that that's when you really understand the benefit of it. So, yeah. So if I could get your contact information, okay. I can, I, I can work and we can All work. Right. I sent it to you in the in, in the chat box. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Excellent presentation. Thank you. I have a quick question. Does the products offer any type of warranty? Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I should have I should have mentioned that. I um when you're putting something together like this, you have to you have to thread a line between, okay, 
obviously, you know, I'm in the industry, I work for a company, but I don't want it to be where I'm just pushing one particular product, you know, versus trying to satisfy the overall need of helping people to understand fall prevention and safety and independent use. So a lot of stuff I kept up, but yeah, our stuff comes with a three-year warranty. Um, and so, yeah, and so that three-year warranty uh, covers everything. And yeah, and, and again, there's a, a wide variety of styles and colors and yeah, there, there's a whole, I could do another hour on just available options and that kind of stuff. So yes. Hello? Are we still there? I'm still here. I'm not sure about yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah, I'm still okay. here. I'm going to jump off. Okay. I um, We may have, I, I'm looking here. I think you guys can still see my screen. We may have lost Steve. Yeah, I think he, uh, I think he topped off. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, well, do, do you guys have any other questions or anything else I could help out with? Um, also, just know I travel a lot um, because this is what I do. And I have been on site many times to assist in these types of products. And so um, if you have a, a product or an in installation and you're concerned about any of those aspects, I'm always here to help any way that I can. And it does not cost you or your clients any money at all to send us a drawing or a spec or send us a drawing. We have the Revit files. We can spec up everything, making sure it's fully ADA compliant as well as um, uh, you know getting your pricing, everything. And then you have that and then you, you have that available and you can present it to your client, give it to them as an option. You can look at it and just throw it in the trash if you want to. It, it's just another option that you have that really doesn't cost you anything just to make sure that you're aware of everything that's available when you're working with your clients. Great, thank you so much for all the information. Okay, hey, thank you. I really appreciate your time. Steve just called me, so um, uh, if it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave the meeting. I think it's concluded and then I will, um, meet with Steve once we're once we're done here. So thank you all again and please have a have a great day. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much. This was awesome.